Welcome back, Spartans. Cyberwater. There is only so much benefit in reading and learning theory, and nothing beats practice. Lifting, dancing, socializing require practice. And why should cybersecurity be any different? Today we are going to talk about side projects. Let's begin. While I'm a strong proponent of being well-rounded, when it comes to choosing a side project, you have to be pragmatic and you have to focus on the area that you want to improve or find a job in. I have checked the videos of other cybersecurity professionals on YouTube and the side projects they tend to suggest are high-level projects such as building a sim, perhaps an active directory or even a honeypot. Now the truth is that when you join a security team, the chances of a sim already being in place are pretty high, especially if you are working in security operations. And the chances of actually running into a honeypot at a large company are pretty small. And your chances of touching one, especially if you join areas such as security operations or perhaps security engineering are slim to none. I am personally a bigger fan of building security tools and security software because your chances of actually needing to build a tool or automating a process at a certain point in your career are quite high. And this is what separates the passive users from the problem solvers, which is the kind of person and professional that you actually want to be. To make the video simpler and organize it as I like to organize it usually, I will divide it in two major sections, blue team and red team. While most of you probably know what red and blue means in cybersecurity, I will remind you. Blue team means defenders, while red team means attackers. Blue teams are usually security operations, security engineering, and even digital forensics and incident response, while red teams are usually red teams or perhaps teams of pen testers or any sort of capability that focuses on offensive security. Both of these teams are quite related, but the mindsets and the associated projects are slightly different. And that is why I've decided to organize this video in this way. Let's start with Blue Team and Blue Team project number one, building and hardening a home infrastructure. This is hands down the most classic project that you are going to ever come across. And most people are going to suggest that you build something like this. You are in essence becoming the security engineer in charge of your own personal home network. While this is not as realistic as working as a security engineer for a corporation, this is going to give you a very good idea of how things play out if you were to do it. You can get as fancy as you want with your infrastructure, but I recommend that your project touches at least one or more of the following points. Router configurations such as integrated firewall, IDS slash IPS and routing tables. Segregation of networks, for instance, you can create a network for your pen testing, a network for your parents, let's call it a dirty network, and you guys know what I'm talking about, right? DNS sinkholing, a dedicated IDS or IPS, network logging and packet captures, and finally, log collection and analysis. Moving on to blue team project number two, building and hardening a cloud infrastructure. Now, this is a massive improvement compared to the previous project and the much more realistic one. And this is actually the project that I recommend because I run my own cloud infrastructure on AWS and I can tell you that building it and hardening it has been one of the best experiences I've ever had with a side project. And I've learned immensely up to this point. Most cloud providers offer you a one year free tier so that you can get your feet wet with cloud technologies. This is going to be your home lab on steroids. And if you decide to stay with the same cloud provider and keep your infrastructure after the free tier, you are going to pay a bigger price tag. The biggest advantage of this project is that it's going to give you the best experience as a security engineer or perhaps a security operations analyst if you want to monitor the infrastructure. Because most companies these days or any company worth its salt is running in the cloud. The chances of you running into AWS, Azure or God forbid GCP when you are working as a cybersecurity professional are quite high. So that means that if you build your infrastructure in advance and you have it as part of your portfolio, that is going to give you a massive edge compared to the competition. Now, some of you may be wondering what kind of project can you run on AWS? And in this case, I will give you some details because a home lab is quite different from a cloud project. What I suggest is that you deploy a simple 
EC2 instance, and in this case, I'm going to focus on AWS because I am much more experienced with AWS. It's where I have my own infrastructure. I suggest that you run an EC2 instance with your personal blog or website, and you can also use simple email service from AWS, assuming that you have your own domain and use it to manage your email. So that means that you can have your own website and blog, and at the same time, you can have your own custom email running on AWS. Now, word of advice, be sure to configure the security groups properly and the network access control list as well. And make sure, this is probably the most important, that you have some automation in place to automatically patch EC2. And this is something that you can easily do with AWS. Never forget that with the cloud, the sky is the limit. Blue Team project number three, Malware Analysis Lab. Virtual machines are a godsend, regardless of the area that you work in. But for malware analysis, they are the bread and butter. They are indispensable tools. If you are interested in becoming a reverse engineer, as I used to be, a simple project that you can put together is a malware analysis lab. You can set up a virtual machine on your personal laptop or maybe a server that you have at home with reverse engineering and malware analysis tools or perhaps with Flare VM, if you are feeling lazy. Now, it is worth noting that you shouldn't allow your VM to connect to the internet, especially when you are playing with malware. Now, in my own experience, malware usually doesn't care much about your local network, and it focuses more on the infected host and the command and control server. But still, you don't really want your FTP server to be compromised by a piece of malware that you decide to run in your own internal infrastructure. And if you are interested in simulating a command and control server, there are plenty of tools out there that can do it so that the malware execution is as reliable and as close to real life as possible. Blue Team project number four, Threat Intelligence Pipeline. Now, information is the new goal, especially when it is actionable. Now, if you are curious and you decide to search Google, you are going to find out that there are plenty of threat intelligence feeds that you can aggregate and leverage. A simple project is creating a pipeline that collects, aggregates, and processes threat intelligence indicators from multiple sources. You can then send these processed indicators to, say, an appliance or a device that you have running on your local network. And this device can either alert or block activity related to these indicators. This is a great project to get your feet wet in the world of automation and threat intelligence. And you can combine this with the personal home lab that I mentioned before. We are done with blue team. Let's go for red team. Red Team Project number one, Offensive Security Tool. When it comes to offensive security, Kali Linux is probably the first thing that comes to mind. And this is usually how it plays out. Kali has all the tools that you need, so why reinvent the wheel? For starters, learning and building your own tools helps you understand how the existing tools work. And second, but most importantly, at some point you are going to run into a situation where the tools that exist don't really fit your requirements. So you have to build your own. Now, I remember when I was spending some time with offensive security and I was exploring some of the tools. Now, I remember testing a well-known DNS brute forcing tool at some point. And it turned out that the tool would simply skip one of the domains to be resolved if the DNS resolver returned an error rather than retrying after a back-off period, which to me makes a lot of sense. At the time, the tool did not support the usage of open resolvers and also it didn't support multi-threading. And that is when I decided to create Golem which had all the features that I wanted. And it is written in Golang, not Python. And then he said, but Python supports multi-threading as well. <laughs> Gets me every time. I will leave the link for the tool in the description. A few examples of tools include scanners, brute forcers, binary infectors, such as Pimp My Binary, which is the tool that I developed in Python, and they can also find a link in the description or an offensive security pipeline that combines several existing tools. Red Team Project number two, Offensive Security Lab. And we are back to virtual machines. Many websites host vulnerable virtual machines for learning purposes. A simple project for you would be to have a home server running these vulnerable virtual machines and then using your personal laptop to hack these machines. And you can run Kali Linux as a virtual machine as well on your own laptop. Or if you want to get fancy, you can build your own distribution and run it in a virtual machine. It's up to you. The possibilities are limitless. Red Team Project number three, attacking a real infrastructure. Oh, not so fast, cowboy. Pause your virtual machine. 
I see you opening a terminal, Jerry. Close that terminal. Close it. One of the things I disliked about offensive security was that you were one scan away from getting in legal trouble. Practicing offensive security is not easy because more often than not, you have to build your own fake, your own simulated environment that you can attack, which most likely will not mirror the idiosyncrasies of a real-world company because each company has different ways of operating, different types of configurations, different stacks, and also they make different types of security mistakes. Now, one of the steps in offensive security involves reconnaissance. And there are two types of reconnaissance. There is active reconnaissance and passive reconnaissance. Passive reconnaissance usually implies that you touch the infrastructure somehow. And this is where tools like scanners come in. You are actually interacting and sending data to the infrastructure. Passive reconnaissance involves you using open source intelligence that you can collect from Google Dorks, DNS, or perhaps Shodan to enumerate as much as possible of an infrastructure without actually interacting directly with it. Each country is different, and you must bear in mind that in some countries, the act of scanning is considered illegal, so be careful. Now, what I recommend here so that you don't get in legal trouble is for you to spend more time with passive reconnaissance and you try to find as much as possible about a company's infrastructure without actually touching it, without actually scanning it or trying to look for vulnerabilities with existing vulnerability scanners. In this way, you are going to learn to be quite resourceful and you are going to avoid jail. And that is it, Spartans. Several side project ideas that are going to boost your practical skills and make you a much better candidate. Remember, a cyber Spartan talks the talk and walks the walk. Anything less and I might have to revoke your club membership. Like, subscribe, enable notifications, and leave a comment below if you believe that Python is worse than global warming and taxes. Until next time, stay safe, stay paranoid.